Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include the safe disposal of hazardous waste. We're handing over more power to the EU, but the government doesn't want you to know. Don't leave us behind if UK leaves EU, says Gibraltar's chief minister. And debt burden across 17 country eurozone is up further despite years of austerity and return to growth. Plus, Greeks are now 40% poorer than in 2008 as austerity bites. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. John D. Yates wrote a fine piece to us about the fact that no one in government or civil service appears to have the first clue about what to do or indeed where to even start when it comes to EU legislation. John writes, My wife and I are in the process of preparing the MS for the third edition of one of our textbooks for the British Beekeepers Association examinations in microscopy. This is what we have had to write about one particular section, 8.4, of the syllabus. 8.4, the safe disposal of hazardous waste, e.g. chemicals, broken glass slides, scalpel blades and the remains of bees. Now this is a new item in the syllabus and involves a plethora of EU regulations because of the tens of thousands of regulations which have emanated from Brussels and because it is so easy for the man in the street to inadvertently transgress we thought it prudent to approach our local district council on this matter as they are responsible for waste collection and disposal the following email was sent to them now the rest of this letter reads like a comedy sketch from Monty Python and frankly it's infuriating to see such utter waste of manpower and resources many thanks to John for taking the time to write in with this information and uh, do keep your letters coming folks what crazy EU legislation have you come across lately One of the most important parts of the Lisbon Treaty was to change police and criminal justice measures from intergovernmental arrangements to a responsibility of the European Union. This removed the veto, brought in the European Parliament and allowed the Commission to bring enforcement actions via the Court of Justice. Now, the United Kingdom was given a block opt-out to be applied before the deadline of December the 1st, 2014. This has now been exercised, removing the United Kingdom from 129 measures and the government is now deliberating on those which it wishes to rejoin. Now, the government set out its position in July in response to some pressure and agreed to allow time for a number of House of Commons Select Committees to review its options. And jumping to the key facts in this article, I think that this is one sentence reveals more about the truth about the current intent of the UK government under Chairman Cameron. With regard to the block opt-out, Many of the 94 measures that will be permanently opted out of are defunct or trivial, while the 35 to be re-entered bring the full authority of the Court of Justice of the European Union, the Commission and the European Parliament to bear. Chief Minister Fabian Picardo is worried leaving the EU could harm Gibraltar's economy as Spain and other European countries could impose heavy import and export tariffs on goods moving across the border. And he pleaded with Britain to make sure the ROC's residents had a voice in the debate on EU membership and called on the main parties to guarantee Gibraltar's get a vote in a referendum. Well, good point, Fabian, and we'll try to keep you in mind, but right now it looks like we're having a jolly old time of it just trying to secure a referendum and put a hold on the EU invasion force running a blitzkrieg over Queen and Country. Uh, this is such key stuff, folks. If this isn't stopped, and very soon, by very soon, I mean before the next UK general election, well, frankly, you might as well vote for NBE. That's the Noddy and Big Ears party for all the good it'll do you. The Eurozone's debt burden rose further in the second quarter. Official figures showed Wednesday, despite years of austerity, that one prominent European Union economist says intensified the financial crisis. 
And Eurostat, the EU's statistics office, said debt across the 17 countries that use the euro rose to 93.4% of the eurozone's annual gross domestic product, from 92.3% the previous quarter. In absolute terms, the eurozone's debt pile grew to 8.87 trillion euros in the second quarter from 8.75 trillion euros in the first three months of the year. That's actually lower than the US's debt burden of about 17 trillion dollars, a little over 100% of the country's GDP. Well, let's just stop for a second. What does all this debt mean for us and our future? The big issue that I see looming not very far ahead is that the countries funding this debt, i.e. buying up the bonds, otherwise known as government IOUs, are the Chinese, Indian and South American economies. Well, that means that those countries must be shedding a surplus, and indeed they are. They're using that surplus to lend into the Western economies. But why? So that those economies can buy more Chinese and Indian clothes, iPhones, trinkets, plastic bits of tat, beads, etc, etc. Now, this is no different than the trick that Westerners pulled on the Native American Indians. But what does it mean for our future and the future of our children? Perhaps taking a look at the history of the American Indians throughout the colonisation of North America might give us a clue. Sure, the times might be very different, but the way the economic model is, it just works the same. Greeks are on average almost 40% poorer than they were in 2008, data has indicated. Laying bare the impact of brutal recession and austerity measures the government may be forced to extend into next year. Now, gross disposable incomes fell 29.5% between the second quarters of 2008 and 2013, and Greek statistics service Elstat revealed yesterday. Now, adding in cumulative consumer price inflation over the same period takes the decline close to 40%. Now, this is a good tight article and lays the figures right before your eyes. Politically, this is an outrage. Greece and her people have been sacrificed like a lamb at the altar of the Euro kleptocrat, all in the name of saving the Euro and the European project. A Greek exit and return to the drachma would have allowed the country to devalue, making its produce and lucrative tourist market look very attractive to Europeans who are being hard-pressed by the economic woes. But no, the moment the very utterance of a democratic referendum on the austerity-backed Wonga loan from the IMF was mentioned, the Prime Minister was ousted by EU technocrats and an EU dictator installed. Anyone giving this topic more than a cursory glance will see that this has been the deliberate sacrifice of Greece to save the face of an elite few. Today in our video library, I've picked this little number from Russia today. Pitcairn Island. Yep, I've never heard of it either. But fear not, folks, because Uncle Dave and his buddies have. Pitcairn Island has a population of 50. That's right, five zero people. But the island has received 4.4 million euros from the European Union in the last 13 years. That's 6,800 euros per person. Oh, but wait, we're not done yet. Under Mr Cameron's parliamentary tribe, the good, good folks of Pitcairn, who don't pay any taxes, by the way, received £10 million sterling over four years. Wow! Let's do the maths on that. So that's £2.5 million per year, divided by 50 people. That's £50,000 per person per year. Yep, it's time to dig out your digital scribes again, folks, and write to your MP asking them to justify why they feel it is appropriate or even necessary for the UK taxpayer to fund each person on Pitcairn Island with 50 grand a year. Now, also, just a quick reminder about our EU referendum poll on the front page of our website. We'd really like to get this to a 1,000 votes to give us some practical gauge of how you would vote in a referendum. So please, please do spread the word and ask folks to place their vote. There is no sign-in or anything like that. It's literally one click and you're done. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>